What's up guys, it's Reviver, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about high refresh rates or super high refresh rates in VR. As you probably know already, the PC gaming monitors are getting crazy. They're now up to 360 hertz. But meanwhile, the VR technology is actually progressing quite rapidly. Valve Index was the first VR headset introducing 120 Hz and even 144 Hz mode and some people say that it actually is mind-blowing. If my experience is anything to go on, it will actually make you a better VR gamer. Some people cannot see a difference though. I didn't really notice a big difference, but it did feel very smooth. But either way, there is an option to do 144 Hertz now. Meanwhile, Pimax 5K Plus also got an 120 Hertz mode with a smaller field of view, still larger than the Valve Index. And more and more people are actually experiencing that games like Beat Saber, Box VR, table tennis games and sports games are actually better with a higher refresh rate. You might not be aware of this, but Pimax is about to release a new headset, yes, another one. It's called Pimax 5K Super, which supports high refresh rates up to 160 and 180 hertz, which means you can play games with up to 180 frames per second. And I have tried more than a dozen of games on the Pimax 5K Super over here, and I'll let you know what I think about it. And remember, this is not a review of the 5K Super or anything, this is my take on what high refresh rate can give you in virtual reality. And before we begin, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and thank you so much to all my Patreons and my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin, and VR Ambassador. So yes, there is a new Pimax VR headset coming up along with the other ones like the 8KX, 8K+, Plus, the Artisan. Now we also get the 5K Super, which supports high refresh rates up to 160 or 180 Hertz natively. So yes, this is true refresh rate. It's not interpolated, it's not emulated, it's true refresh rate of 180 Hertz. It also supports 72, 90, 120 and the others above. The panels has the same resolution as the 5K+, Plus, which are dual 2.5K panels with a resolution of 2560 x 4040p per eye. The 5K Super is not only a new headset with a higher refresh rate, it also introduces a lot of those new benefits that the 8KX and 8K Plus has, such as the RE or ruggedized housing, a comfort kit included which tremendously improves the comfort, and also the standard mass or the modular audio strap is now included. The field of views though, well if you're running everything up to 120 Hz you'll get the same field of views as the 5K Plus but as soon as you bump up the refresh rate up to 160 Hz the large field of view of the 5K Super is the same as the normal field of view of the 5K Plus. Also the large field of view in 180 Hz is as big as the small field of view of the 5K Plus which actually is larger or wider than the Valve Index. It is expected to be around $100 more expensive than the 5K Plus and it is going to release this winter anytime soon. Anyway, this is not a review of the 5K Super. This video is about high refresh rates and how you can benefit from it and if you do or not. So let me give you my take on the 160 and 180 Hz refresh rate. Well, there are, in my opinion, six different aspects you have to take in consideration when running 160 or 180 Hz compared to, let's say, 90 or even 75 Hz as you do on the native mode of the Pimax 8KX in the native 4K resolution. Well, we're all different humans, of course, and physiologically, the human eye can actually see up to 1000 frames per second. But how many of them can we really distinguish and can we even see the difference between 90 Hz, 120 Hz or let's say 180 as the 5K Super has? Some people say that they clearly see the difference, it really improves the immersion, it really makes the game more alive and more realistic. Meanwhile, other people say they don't see any difference at all. Well, Norm from Tested actually was mind blow after trying the Valve Index for the first time in 120 and 144 Hz. 120 Hz and 144 Hz? It's like I've downed two cans of Coke and I'm 
hyper aware. Immersion is, this, is really, I feel more immersed in those spaces. Personally, I see the difference between, let's say, 90 and 120 hertz, but I cannot really tell you it's mind-blowing and it doesn't really increase the immersion for me. In my opinion, you get slightly more smooth hand movements and hands gestures at the same time when you're moving your head to left or right, up and down, it really feels less blurry because the refresh rate can actually cope with the fast movements. But I'm not really sure if that's an argument to buy another headset with a super high refresh rate. The second aspect is about what VR games you're actually playing. Well, obviously there are very fast games such as Beat Saber, Box VR, Pistol Whip for example, or how about table tennis games like Eleven Table Tennis or uh, Racket Fury and many many others. Well, those games, according to people during our US Roadshow with Pimax, they told us, a lot of them told us at least, that it makes a huge difference going from, let's say, the 8KX refresh rate of 75Hz up to 160Hz or 180Hz with the 5K Super. Apart from these very fast games, there are also other games like first-person shooters, let's say Pavlov or Contractors or Onward or any other FPS game in VR. These games need a low latency or a lowest possible latency. They require fast movements and smooth movements, which could actually give you some benefit in fast action, especially in competitive matches. Some people even say that a high refresh rate can help in flight and racing simulators where you get some smoother turns when you turn with your car, everything just moves around you a little bit more smooth. And then we also have the casual VR games like Skyrim for example, like Boneworks and many others. Well, it all depends on what you play and how often you play these games on your VR headset. The third aspect is actually, is your PC fast enough? Well, obviously, high refresh rate headsets need very high frames per second to be rendered by your PC. And that's a question, can your PC hold it up? For instance, the Pimax 8KX is running a native resolution of 4K per eye, but it's a 75 Hz uh, refresh rate headset in the native mode and 120 Hz in the upscale mode, which doesn't matter in that case. Anyway, when you're running those two 4K panels or render them with 75 Hz, it actually only requires you to run 75 frames per second while when you're running the 5K Super, for example, you need to render 160 or 180 frames per second in that game to really get the game fully smooth. Of course, you can lower down the refresh rate on the 5K Super to 120, 90, or even 72 or 64, I think it's the lowest one. Either way, you should take this in consideration that you might need a very fast PC with a top of the line GPU like the RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti to be able to run this 5K Super in 160 or 180 Hertz. The fourth aspect is are you willing to sacrifice the resolution and the field of view for a higher refresh rate? Well, it's all up to you. I'm not so sure about it, to be honest. Well, here's the thing. As I said before, the 5K Super, if you want to run it on 160Hz or 180Hz, you will have to decrease the field of view a little bit. And also, if you, let's say, buy the 5K Super instead of the 8KX, you get a 2.5K resolution per eye, while you get a 4K resolution per eye natively on the 8KX and 8KX only runs in 75 Hz. So, well, for me, I would rather take the resolution and the maximum field of view possible instead of the refresh rate. But that's all up to you. And I think you should have that into consideration. The fifth aspect is that PC gaming or PC monitor gaming is not really the same thing as VR gaming. Well, I know people are right now, as of now, using 240 hertz monitors, they're using 360 hertz monitors or even high, higher, I don't know. There is a reason why they're buying this monitor and that's because when you have a mouse, when you move it very, very fast, it actually decreases the blur, it makes the image way more sharp. But remember that in VR, you will never be able to turn your head as fast as you do with your hand, with your mouse. 
Well, it's, it's really not possible, it's physio physiologically not possible. Even though you can move your head very, very fast in any direction, it will not be the same thing. So I don't really think that the difference between the 90 hertz and the, uh, let's say, 140 hertz is as big in VR as it is on a monitor. At least if you ask me, but I'll give you more in a second. Before that, the sixth and last aspect you should have in consideration is that there is a danger using 160 and 180 hertz refresh rate in VR and that is can you really go back once you have started to use the 5k super for a while can you really go back to let's say your HTC Vive Pro or a 5k plus or even 8k X with a 75 hertz refresh rate well when it comes to field of view once you are starting to use a wide field of view in VR it's really really difficult to go back to an, well, let's say 90 or 100 degrees of field of view like the Vive Pro has for example so how about going back from 180 hertz to 90 hertz will that destroy your immersion again well that's a risk that you should have in account before you upgrade your system to 180 hertz but what do i feel personally about this as to trying more than a dozen vr games with the high refresh rate of 180 hertz well let me start off by saying i use the pimax 8kx quite daily right now. I love the resolution, I love the field of view, I love the crispness of those, well, those panels are just amazing, no screen door effect or whatsoever. But I'm also used to the 75 Hertz, which is only available in the native mode. Now going to 160 or 180 Hertz, it does make a difference. I have to tell you, it depends on the game of course but it does make a difference in games like beat saber for example well let, let me start saying I'm, i i suck at beat saber no really really i suck at beat saber i'm probably just too old for these kind of games anyway i saw a difference and i saw a clear difference running beat saber in 160 and 180 hertz the boxes the boxes which are coming right at you they move more smooth the sabers are more smooth or your hand gestures and the latency and the fast response is everything in beat saber i think and the the well the more difficult level you go the more important it is that you have a high refresh rate and even if the frame rate is not 100 percent maxed out i actually had struggles to to run a beat saber in 180 frames per second it still felt super super smooth it felt more smooth in some way than the 8kx running in a full 100% 75 hertz refresh rate which is actually surprising to me also fast sports games as 11 table tennis racket fury for example they just felt a little bit more realistic running in 160 and 180 frames per second the ball just moves a little bit more smooth and it's easier to follow the ball with your eyes when it comes to VR first-person shooters though, well, honestly, I cannot tell a difference. I don't know if there's something wrong with me, if I'm just too old, but when playing Pavlov, Onward, Contractors for example, even other fast games uh, like, let's say, Serious Sam, I just don't see the difference. Also note that none of these games could actually maintain a stable 180 frames per second in a 180 hertz mode. So it might affect a little bit, but even if the game felt really smooth, I just could not feel any difference. And I actually switched in between the 5K Super and the 8KX in between during the day I was testing everything and I just couldn't find the wow effect or the, 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 the mind-blowing immersion that you were told about from Norm from Tested for example. When it comes to casual VR games like Skyrim for example, you have In-Depth, Boneworks, we have Series Sam once again, Doom VFR and many many others. I prefer the wide feel of you actually and I prefer the high resolution of the 8KX. It just makes the detail so much more sharper. I just feel that the high refresh rate doesn't do a lot at all or maybe nothing at all for me. But one thing again is that even when I was running some of these games in below 100 frames per second in the 180 hertz mode it just felt smooth for some reason. I was expecting a lot of reprojection. I was actually 
pretty sure that the game was running in 180 frames per second until I actually saw the recordings I'm just showing you, which clearly shows that we are all the way from 80 frames per second to let's say 140 frames per second and not even close to the 180 frames per second which should be well how do you say considered a requirement for 180 hertz right and lastly VR simulators which are actually my favorite uh, VR games I'm running most of the time uh, I'm talking about Airfly FS2, X-Plane 11, Assetto Corsa it's basically flight simulators and racing simulators does the 160 or 180 hertz mode really benefit or give you any benefit in those simulators? Well, my take on this is no, absolutely not. There's absolutely no difference whatsoever. I could admit that when I was turning with the car in Assetto Corsa, it just felt a little bit more smooth maybe, even though the game was running in maybe like 140 frames per second and not 180. But still, it might have felt a little bit more smooth, but I don't really know if it makes me a better driver or if it really benefits me in any way. So a fast repeat now, does the 160 or 180 Hz refresh rate help you? Well, in fast games, yes. Beat Saber, yes. Pavlov, maybe. VR simulators, no. Uh, casual gaming, probably not. And other desktop work or whatever, nah, I don't think so. But before you decide if you want to go with the 5K Super as your new VR headset, instead of the 8KX for example, once you go with a high refresh rate, it might be very difficult to go back. It's all a matter of getting used to it. Just like with field of view and resolution, once you go lower, you really feel the big difference. Well, I may have said this already before, I'll stay with the 8KX, with the native 4K resolution, with the larger field of view, and I'll just skip the high refresh rates for now, because personally, I do not benefit from them. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments down here below, and also, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hit like, subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next video. Cheers!